Welcome to the Windows and Computer channel and this is a quick video to talk about another side of the future of Windows 10 and Windows in general and it has to do with of course the cloud and also an interesting question that I've had a few times um, and I just had it today I was reading the comments how about a future where Windows 10 or Windows in general is over? Can it happen? Will it happen? And here's the thing. So Windows operating system is and has been around for since the 80s, since, you know, Windows 1. It really took off when Windows 3 arrived, which was the first, I'd say the first real revolution of Windows. And... Um, and everybody had, you know, Windows 3.11. And then we had Windows 95, which was an event, almost like an Apple event. People actually waiting outside stores at midnight to get a copy of Windows 95. Who would have thought that could happen when you look at it today? And then time went by, Windows 98 and Windows Millennium and Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, and all the variants that goes with it. So now we are at Windows 10, and one of the things that happens with the future of Windows is that Microsoft, of course, is uh, a big, big player in the cloud, and it's actually the biggest uh, side of business right now uh, at Microsoft. Cloud is becoming big. And of course, one of the aspects of cloud is um, eventually bringing a Windows 10 cloud. And that, of course, a lot of people are like, what does that mean? Well, as computers and the Internet are more and more interconnected, what's happening is that as time goes by, one of the things, the key things that we see is that we are more and more inclined to use Internet-based uh, services. That also means that Technically, even Windows could be internet-based or cloud-based, meaning you're not running software locally anymore on a computer. You're running it somewhere in a computer online. And what you see is the result, just the interface. So it's like seeing a desktop, but the desktop isn't really the Windows inside your computer that's showing a desktop. You're actually using cloud-based Windows. So what you see is a internet-based interface rather than a local interface inside your computer. And that is an idea that Microsoft is working on. It's working on the fact that if they could put all the power of Windows in the cloud, it will actually fix one big problem. It's that, you know, all of these major updates and everything, well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. Why? Because it's not a software running inside your computer anymore. It's just a minimum of software on your device that is actually showing you a web or a cloud-based interface. That would fix a lot of problems um, you know, concerning bad updates and, and, and all of that. But it also requires uh, one aspect of what is still not available for a lot of people, a very good and rock solid internet connection. Still a lot of people have very limited broadband internet. So it's still not necessarily a good idea or feasible for a lot of people, but it's, it's slowly making its way. And there will be probably a time when cloud-based Windows will exist rather than, you know, you install Windows in a traditional PC like now. There's a reason why we are excited about online gaming, streaming of games, because what they want to do is stop having you install a game inside some machine that you have at home, but actually run it from the internet and, you know, have you play the game, but you don't have a local copy of it. You're just playing it from some computer somewhere on the internet, which gives you the same experience when you play it, 
It's just that you don't have it inside your computer. The danger of that is that it, of course, now opens up the door to, you know, since Windows 10 started in 2015, how many people said, well, you know, it's free the first year or whatever, and then we're going to have a subscription. And even today, I hear a lot of people saying, yeah, yeah, but Windows 10 is coming up to a subscription soon. It's not. It's not. It's already a subscription for enterprise, and it's always been like that for enterprise anyways. And it's not coming like that to uh, the, the regular users. That would kill off the regular user market. N nothing more. It's not like, um, you know, Office. Office is a productivity tool that a lot of people need when they work in an office and they work. They need it to actually create and do stuff. It's something that is a big standard. Uh, that is the Microsoft Office suite. Windows, you know, if that would become a subscription, people would just move on to other platforms. They would maybe even ditch the PC as it is and say, well, you know what? I think I can do all my stuff with a tablet when running Android or, or you know, uh, an iPad or whatever. But the Windows 10 Cloud is something that a lot uh, that Microsoft is looking at, and of course, a lot of software companies are looking at that also. The also the the, the big thing with that is, uh, you know, software piracy has always been a big big problem and a big challenge. Well, put all in the cloud, no more piracy because you will have to have a paid subscription to uh, access that information. So cloud-based Windows simply means that rather than having a copy on your computer, you have a device that has the minimum required to go online, and that's where all is happening. For you, the experience is the same. A desktop, a start menu, everything is the same. It You don't see a difference, but it's not operating from your machine. That means it becomes universal. That means you could technically take an Android tablet and go online and have Windows because it's cloud-based. It doesn't require a specific operating system. It works as long as you have a web uh, you know, capability. So that opens up to every device Windows cloud. But we're still far off from that, and we're still far from having that capability and like I said, a lot of people, not just around the world, but even in Canada and the U.S., have very limited speed of Internet access, which means that this experience would not be good right now. But it's slowly making its way. The other thing that uh, is interesting in the question, it uh, I've got that question asked a few times. Do you think at some point, eventually, Windows could be gone? You know, Microsoft would say, well, this is... The last update, we're going to keep that update for that amount of time. And after that, well, there's nothing else. Because that question started appearing when, um, many years ago, uh, the, you know, Satya Nadella mentioned that Windows 10 was the last Windows they do. That scared off a lot of people saying, well, does that mean there's no more Windows after that and that we, uh, we, we won't have any Windows-based PCs anymore? We're a very long way from that, and the, one of the reasons why is that the um, revenue in, in Windows is still pretty good. So it's already it's many billions that Microsoft is still racking in with Windows 10. Plus the fact that Windows is a major player in enterprise. You know, when we say there's a billion users of Windows 10... Well, 90%, 85 and 90% of all of that is just business PCs. In reality, users at home that use Windows are not a majority. We A lot of people don't have a PC with Windows anymore. A lot of users, you know, the young generation, they use their, their tablets or their, their smartphone and they do all they want there. No need for a computer. So the orientation of the business market means Windows is still you know good to go for a long time and of course we'll have PCs running Windows 10 but you know we're in 2020 
and in the next decade, you know, up to 2030, will Windows still exist in 2030? That, that one is an interesting question. In the span of 10 years, what will happen? Interesting to see that right now what we know is about a year and a half in advance all the time on Windows. So we know what's happening this year. We know the first half of next year, 21H1, is something that is uh, already in the making. Uh, but we don't really know more than a year and a half. And unless there's some really big re you know, revolution in computers and, and the way enterprise work, I think Windows is still here for many years to come. But as the platform changes, as we have other ways of maybe interacting and working, maybe that platform will shrink. And, you know, the PC market is shrinking. So if the next 10 years shows that every year PC sales are down, well, PC sales are down also means Windows market share is down. At some point, Microsoft might just say, you know what, here's the last version of Windows. We're going to support it for, say, you know, the next five years with security updates. And when that is over, well, you've got to have transitioned to something else because we're not going to be there anymore. But I think this is a very long way off. But I do see, I am capable of seeing an end to Windows someday because we are in a different world now. And um, there's different ways of interaction and, and, and working. And honestly, if we have cloud-based devices, maybe that's the future. Companies will have just a little terminal that has access to the internet. And all the software and the tools they need to work will be cloud-based. Well, when that happens, when that becomes something that enterprise can see that it's, it's going to work like that, um, I think that's when Windows is going to be retired. And that could be, you know, in the next 10 years. You never know. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.